Okay, because because there's there's a, a demand. Uh, I will I will explain to you what an actual Sex Addicts Anonymous meeting actually is like because I've gone to one. I've gone to one. <clears throat> that was enough for me. I decided never again. So this is what it was like. I just I just got a I just got a cum shot of coffee right in my eye. God damn it. Well, this has just turned into a whole different type of video, didn't it? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> anyway, I go look in my local paper for all the twelve-step programs, and there's all sorts of kind of different ones uh, here in Eugene. <clears throat> and I find Sex Addicts Anonymous. They meet in the basement of a church over on Thirteenth Street uh, twice a week. So I go down there. It's a very dimly lit hallway. Uh, these are very claustrophobic looking rooms. There's only one little window up near the ceiling because you're in a basement. Inside the room is like kids decorations because this is all like for Sunday school classrooms, you know, which is a little weird. The chairs are a little too small and I go in, I sit down and eventually everybody fills in. Inside that room are... Uh, four men and one woman. Now, I had uh, read the book Choke. I think it was Choke. Yeah, Choke by Chuck Palahniuk. So I thought, Sex Addicts Anonymous, I'm going to hear some crazy shit. I'm going to hear some wild stuff. Ha ha. This is going to be just so interesting, and I, I can't wait. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. The one sort of interesting aspect to it was the girl. Uh, she was unfortunate looking and very large. Uh, but she was nice. She was pleasant. She had a very sunny uh, demeanor. Her problem was that she was addicted to anonymous sex, to whatever kind of sex she could get, uh, including going to uh, porno theaters or like porno shops where they have like the booths in the back and uh, glory hole stuff and this would be interesting except she explained why and it's because she had severe psychological issues that stemmed from years an entire lifetime of constant perpetual violent sexual abuse that she suffered to the point now that she feels absolutely no value whatsoever of herself or her worth in any way unless she is somehow being she is somehow servicing someone sexually and otherwise being treated like a toilet literally at times so right then and there like this this what should be a fascinating goes to a oh 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 my god Oh my god. Oh, okay. Wow. So, um, you know, and and so th that that was the first person that started that spoke up. And that's why I was like, okay, well, at least at least that's that's something. Um, cuz keep in mind, when I went to this, it was because I was with this like horribly abusive girlfriend who found that I I watched porn like once or twice and was like, you're a sex addict and like told me I had to go. And because I was kind of interested, I was like, okay, I'll go see what this is about. So I'm literally there because my girlfriend like went through my browser history and found I looked at porn. That's that's my contribution to this whole thing. Um, so it, there's there's me, there's this girl, this really unfortunate girl with, their, with all of her fucking problems. And then there's these, uh, Three or four other dudes. So they start talking, but they're talking really weird. Each one of them talks pretty much the same, but they're saying weird stuff. Like, they're not describing what they have a problem with. They're not describing anything they might have done wrong. They're not, they're not speaking in any kind of specifics, but they're using words like my behavior and my compulsions and my inability to control myself and to hurt others. 
self-destructive behavior. And then, as slowly but surely, little little words were poking through. Little words were poking through at the, of, of like what these guys were talking about. And I suddenly realized, I suddenly realized that I was sitting in a church basement with this horribly broken woman who sucks dicks through holes in a in a in a porno store and four kitty diddlers and i'm there because my girlfriend was mad that i looked at porn whoa <laughs> so suffice to say i did not go back at all and i memorized those motherfuckers faces uh just in case I saw them, like, you know, anywhere near a school or something later. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was, that was some fucked up shit. So, and that's, that's the, that's what's so crazy is that you would think that you'd be able to find some really interesting or strange, quirky things about Sex Addicts Anonymous. No. It's a fucking horror show. It's gross. I mean, if people are getting help with it by utilizing that, good for them, fine, awesome. But by all means, just don't get under any impression that there's something like hip and cool and interesting happening there. No, this is like some, this is some dark ass shit, okay? It's dark ass shit. Now you know. Now you know. You're welcome.